Right, and I and I you know I ran into somebody you know I keep telling you, running into people on in the streets is social science, but you know ran into somebody who you're making you know, an art form. Who, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're, just flat, you're just flattering me now. Um, uh, you know who was on their way to the big transportation powwow in New Braunfels today, where all the transportation people were convening, and the you know the default assumption is twofold. One, you know certainly the constitutional provision was nowhere near enough. And two, the chances of there being any new money for transportation, which was what everybody says we desperately need, is handicapped right now at zero, right? And so, you know, it kind of goes back to what I started with to some degree in terms of that, that kind of tension that's just run through the last couple of sessions, you know? I mean, the last session was fairly successful, you know, at least, you know, in some nominal terms in getting you know, the water measure and the transportation measure through, getting a couple of other small practical things through. But for the most part, nobody walked out of there going, okay, we solved those problems. It was a bare minimum compromise that they could get through both chambers. Um, you know, I think, you know, something that could have been part, also part of the first question, one subtlety maybe or, you know, less obvious thing is that, I mean, I think, I think the results of the election you know, we're actually pretty good for Joe Strauss in a lot of ways, at least in terms of his position in the House. I think, you know, Strauss comes out of this, you know, all of a sudden after all this, this stability, Strauss is like the experienced leader now, you know, which if you go back and think about, you know, the night that Joe Strauss became kind of the accidental speaker is really kind of a, a, an interesting turn of events. And I think the other thing I, I think about in terms of the legislature, Darren, is I, you know, I think I might be the only person in this town that thinks this, possibly. I've got a friend back there that maybe might agree with me, but can't say so publicly. You know, I, I think Dan Patrick is a much more pragmatic guy in the way that he deals with stuff than people anticipate. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree 100%. You know, oh, okay, someone else. Well, no, I agree, <laughs> I agree. The only question is, is it, does, it's really not an issue of can he do it or can't does it, is he going to do it or is he not going well, to do it? Well, where he does it. Yeah, and and what is, whether he determines that it's in his best interest to do it. Right. So, and I, I mean, you know. And so, I mean, if he thinks strategically his best interest is to work with Speaker Strauss and reach compromise on, say, property tax relief, because he's right. going to want property tax relief in some form, but other people want to spend it on things like roads and schools. Right. Uh, as a result. Liberals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we are in Travis County, so there are probably a few. Well, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I, I think there's no, look, there's no doubt that on the high visibility issues where he's invested, Patrick is going to be as conservative as he can be. He's camped out there. He's not moving. But the real question, I think, in terms of how the legislature operates is how much will he, how and how much will he conduct the business of the legislature? And you know, you were talking about the comparison with Dewhurst, and I think that's the other really interesting thing about both the legislature and I think the the constellation of offices. Um, you were Dick was mentioning the Texas Constitution. I mean, one thing about the Texas Constitution that I think has has really not that that has really been compromised in some ways in the last few years has been the fact that Rick Perry's been governor for so long, and it's really it's. The state government has not functioned particularly given the influence that Perry has had in a way that's consistent with the, the governorship envisioned in the Texas Constitution or the, you know, really the political culture of the state. I think you'd have a hard time finding anybody either, you know, at the time of the Constitution or in, in politics in the 60s and 70s or even the 80s who ever envisioned the same person being governor for 14 years. It's just at odds with the way that things work. And I think that's happened at the same time that you've had, um, you, were, you were struggling for diplomacy and now I am. You know, you had a lieutenant governor that did not fully occupy the office in the way that the office was designed. Now, I think some of that, you know, was because of Perry. Some of it was particular to the lieutenant governor. But one thing to me that seems really clear is that with Rick Perry gone and Dewhurst gone and two new people stepping into this, however politically skilled they are, we're gonna see a reset on that. And I think it's gonna be very interesting to see, you know, how that kind of unstable triangle, triangular relationship sorts itself out. 